very good evening and a warm welcome to today's virtual roundtable presented by Limelight Networks in association with E4M. Our topic today is ensuring viewers an over-the-top experience through quality digital content delivery. OTT is not a new term for us. It has been around for the past few years, but COVID-19 gave a boost to its use and now it has reached different heights. In today's discussion, we delve into how OTT players ensure an enhanced viewer experience across devices quickly, reliably, and securely. We bring some of the best minds from OTT industry in India together to share how they are taking this to the next level. Now, before we introduce our speakers, a few key announcements. Firstly, my name is Khyati Kawa, and I'm going to be your host for this session. We are live on Zoom, E4M Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube pages. Please start sending your questions in the Q&A section, and we will take them during the discussion. We are also doing live tweeting using our official page, E4M Tweets, using our hashtag E4M Webinar. Then don't forget to join the online conversation using the hashtag E4M Webinar. And I'm really delighted to welcome our speakers, as I am told and understand that they are right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope all of you are ready to welcome them. We are in the digital world. We can welcome them with our emoticons and claps. So go ahead and do that. As I welcome our first speaker, Tushar Vora, Head Technology Z5 India, Lokesh Chauhan, Chief Technology Eros Now, Shahabuddin Sheikh, Chief Technology Officer Alt Balaji, Amod Ok, Chief Technology Officer Planet Marathi, Satyaji Divakaran, General Manager, Digital MMTV, Rohit Bapat, General Manager, Technology Array, Sorgia Mohanty, Chief Operating Officer, Epic On, and also we have with us Bharat Katragada, Head Technology, ETV Bharat, and last but not the least, our speaker, Vijay Narsimha, Strategic Account Manager, Limelight. And to session this chair this session, I would like to welcome Faisal Kawasu, Founder and Chief Analyst, Tech Arc. Faisal Kawasu is a senior technology market analyst and founder of Tech Arc, which is into technology analytics, research, and consulting services. Prior to this, he has worked with organizations like IDC and CMR, serving leading technology brands with insights and market trends. Faisal is closely engaged with the CXO leadership and strategy teams advising on product portfolio, go-to-market, channel operations, and other areas. Faisal plays an influencing role in the technology domain and actively writes columns in leading tech and mainstream publications. Now, before I invite Faisal to take over the session, I'm going to quickly showcase what will be our talking points in the session. So these are going to be our discussion points for the session. I really encourage all of you to please give in your questions in advance for our speakers. This is going to be a very, very interesting conversation. And with that, I would leave the screen to you, Faisal. Very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Kiyati. Uh, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, as, as you know, I was just uh, talking to some of you backstage that uh, thanks to all of you that uh, we have been, uh, you know, being, we, we are being entertained. And, and I think uh, we understood the importance of entertainment more during lockdown. You know, those days, I think it was just because of some of the technologies that you guys are uh, executing, planning, strategizing, uh, that we have been able to leverage uh, whatever we, we, we were. Uh, so, so, you know, to, before starting this session, uh, as Kiyati pointed out, so we will be having some questions uh, from the audience and, uh, you know, uh, you could please uh, send your questions in the Q&A uh, you know, section and we'll be taking them uh, during the course of uh, interaction. Uh, so if we, if we look at this overall uh, OTT space, I think time has now arrived where it's no more like an additional layer. It has now got very much you know, embedded into that internet space. Earlier it was looked at like as an add-on, as something which is uh, over the top, but now probably the layers are merged. Uh, second, at the same time, uh, the, 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 the entertainment, the you know, content consumption behavior has changed 
phenomenally over these years. And probably pandemic was one such instance where that got um, probably um, more boost, so to say. So, you know, I just want to start this session probably with uh, Tushar. So where is the role of OTT now? Is it like, has entertainment, entertainment, entertainment been, been replaced by OTT, OTT, OTT? What's, what's your view on this? Um, hi everyone, uh, good evening. Uh, it's really good to see everyone here. Um, you know, I've been, I know some of the people on the panel, it's always uh, a pleasure and a delight to talk to everyone. Uh, you know, on the, on the digital front, uh, and you mentioned lockdown and the COVID scenario, I think it's very important to understand that entertainment now is not just about a production ready content, which uh, some production houses are building and OTT players are distributing that particular content. It's all about using the digital devices to not just consume that content, but also use those digital devices to create uh, a content. Uh, we saw the phenomenon that uh, the current band TikTok created uh, at a certain point in time. And uh, there are a lot of Indian players who are trying to fill up that space uh, during this during this period. I think entertainment has to be uh, brought in where we start calling our applications rather than over the top applications. We should start calling ourselves as entertainment applications itself. <coughs> there is interaction, there is gamification, there is engagement. Uh, and uh, I would like to see what other people think about it. But in my opinion, it's uh, it's no more an OTT play for almost all the players who are here uh, in this uh, in this esteemed panel. Great, great. I think nicely put. You know, probably yes. Uh, and OTT to some extent, if not, you know, yes, we have paid. You know, um, entertainment. We have free entertainment, and I think. This is uh, this will remain like this for a while, but I, at least for paid thing, I guess it's it's becoming the new normal out there. What's your view on this, Lokesh? And and uh, you know how has probably you know this pandemic uh, flipped the situation altogether for OTT? Thanks for the question, Fazal, and uh, say hello to all my panelists. Uh, happy to be on the panel with all of you guys. Uh, uh, so what I would say is this pandemic is kind of uh, fast forward in the journey that we were uh, progressing on two to three years down the line. Uh, so the, the the older generation, the housewives, which want very tech savvy, now understand the concept of going online using an app and are able to consume media of their choice. This was something that we believe will happen over a course of time and will require seeding from us, marketing, all of the factors involved. Uh, but pandemic has kind of pushed it. And thanks to what we would say, the broadband providers, the mobility partners that uh, even though there was huge amount of strain on the bandwidth, um, things kept on working. So yeah, kudos to them. Uh, so people now are aware, people understand that they can, you know, have consumption online in itself. That has been a paradigm shift and paying for entertainment to a digital medium is now not uh, something which is very limited to a light of metros. A tier two, tier threes are seeing decent amount of traction. Uh, and it's not been a trend, at least for us, that uh, while pandemic people were happy play, paying, watching, they have continued. It's not like this has been a complete drop off. Obviously, now the cricket is back on menu. There is a significant amount of viewership chunk that cricket takes away. But uh, it's not to the same levels. We have, we have jumped a few levels up where we started off from in the mid March to late March scenario. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think yes, uh, cricket has taken the flavor right now. But as they say, I think there's always uh, a room for take a break moment. Uh, so coming to you, Shahabuddin, like, what what exactly did you see? Uh, how did how do you interpret, you know, this uh, pandemic situation? 
of course it's it's something which has you know propelled growth in ott something something you could share with us essentially how the consumers you know uh, you know um, um, how the consumer trends change with respect to ott uh, firstly hi to everyone on the panel and it's very nice to see a couple of you guys we have been recently in the past couple of days we were on another webinar coming back to pandemic i think it's a learning curve like i think lokesh lodi added it's for the fast forward things that we have planned in the you know future that we wanted to do and it was more of a i would say jigsaw puzzle what we missed the most is the energy that we used to have while we were working on the office with the same colleagues you know the energy on the flow that was one thing which was missing apart from that like uh, remotely working coordinating that wasn't a challenge because most of us are used to that you know coordinating with the team members and playing around it next piece comes the content the production which was badly hit because every production house most of us had some content you know pipeline which was in place for a couple of months i think we survived till march and may post that we had a sh shortage of content now thanks to the lockdown 4 and 5 year for an opening state and we started you know the production of the content so overall it's a good learning experience i would say in terms of connecting with people and remotely working and thanks to zoom a lot of video conferencing and calls are happening and especially like uh, we are spending now more days as or hours i would say as compared to office especially in coordinating and getting the works and deliveries happening sure sure uh um, thank you thank you for your views uh you know we are just having some some quick uh, remarks from everyone and then we'll get on to the you know probably uh some some deeper stuff around tech uh, probably amod uh, if you could you know share your views uh did you see something something you know uh, similar on the regional level as well or or how was it probably different can you hi faisal and everyone else uh first of all i'll say we are the new kid on the block so i was during this pandemic i was more of a consumer than a producer but i'll say that most people need engagement some form of entertainment every day this pandemic has shown us that they some of us need a source that can distract us distract you know from our daily stress and problems so with that said right now because there is just no source of entertainment outside right now this new normal presents a huge opportunity for all content providers especially the ott platforms that's what i'll say about this okay great uh maybe uh, i'll next probably you know i i'd like to ask satyajit you know satyajit so so what's your view uh, on the entire subject how has probably you know um, again i i think we heard from everyone what's the impact of pandemic but probably you know something else you would want to add essentially i would want to understand from the consumer side you know how is consumer um you know uh, reacted to this situation hi everybody um so the thing is uh, here we too had started fairly recently that uh, uh, we had started our uh, manorva max just in uh, september last year and over time it has just picked up and the coming of the pandemic uh, we were still peaking at that time and uh, then the content obviously had it, uh, had to, had to change because there was not much content getting produced but at that time we went out and created content from the uh, people sitting at homes and we entertained the audiences that way for about a month and a half post which we came in with newer shows and stuff and we engaged the audiences much more so the peaking is still happening we really not uh, faced a lull or uh, we've never come down in terms of the numbers as of now so touch wood going is good as of now okay that's great you know at least yes one of the few industries or sectors which is definitely seeing a different uh, trend and and i think the recent trend of or or the recent you know uh, uh, unlimited data being you know that that trend that plan i think that's also propelling to uh, increase consumption of uh, content over internet so to say as and includes ott as well uh, probably i would want to come to you rohit uh, so so what are your initial views on initial remarks on this sure hi guys um, i i want to break this down really into two parts <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so the way i look at it is <clears throat> today with cheap smartphones and uh, you know data plans which are uh, you know easily available and cheap as well uh, it's obvious that people will consume a lot of data over their mobile phones right 
so I think in that sense, there is a massive opportunity for bundled apps. Now think about somebody like a Jio who comes into the market and your app gets featured on a platform like that. For people who are into tech savvy, they will be consuming content of these bundled apps. So there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, secondly, I feel uh, because data is so easily available and connections are fairly reliable now and getting better, you're going to find people consuming data on the go a lot more. People traveling on the trains, uh, you know, getting to work in a bus, so on and so forth, right? But that's that's only one part of it. I think the the bigger question is about whether we can really call it the new novel. And I'm not convinced that OTT is the new novel quite yet. And I think Lokesh kind of touched on that a little bit, because I think there is a you know there is a big chunk of people who still watch regular television, right? So to give you an example, I live in a society which has a lot of senior citizens, and believe me, at eight o'clock in the morning we'll see a message on a society group saying that Tata Sky is down. So I know for sure people are watching Tata Sky. And maybe there is something with regular television that people like, right? Maybe it's the lack of uh, having to make a decision in terms of what I should be watching next. You put on a channel, enjoy it for half an hour, move on, right? So, so that that's one part of the audience. Uh, what about the audience that's outside of tier one, tier two, tier three uh, cities, right? I I try to put up numbers for uh, what's you know what's what's the adoption of uh, say DTH in India today, and and just you know to round off these numbers to give it some perspective, apparently 70 million DTH connections in India, so that's seven zero, and the number of wired broadband connections is 19, one nine, right? So they've got a long way to catch up before people start consuming digital content of their televisions. You know, because I still think television can be a ritual in India where uh, maybe people watch television together as a family. Maybe they watch it together at dinner time. So until that transformation completely happens, I'm not sure this is taking over as a new normal, but absolutely it's only going to grow because I know that your regular uh, cable providers will start providing their content over the internet soon enough. Yeah, so, so those are my thoughts about this. Good, fair point. I think, yes, we have to, you know, so, so there is growth opportunity, but yes, there is a reality also. And, and somewhere, you know, uh, uh, a clear picture would be when we merge both of them. Uh, very good points, Rohit. Uh, so coming to you, Sorgia, what's, what's, what's your view on, the, on this thing? Hi, hi, everyone. So I think uh, we have a couple of uh, key takeaways from, from this uh, complete pandemic situation. Uh, one is, one, is, one being the, the key part, which is the appetite for consumption of content. I think the appetite for consumption of content naturally, which has grown up, we have seen a lot of content from our OTT platform being consumed, which are not consumed earlier. So the user has been looking for a depth. Uh, they have been looking for something which is not available in linear or are not available in other apps. So we always talk about one Sunday and 50 apps, right? So that's the fight that everybody has to do. You know, you have only one Sunday and you need to sort of, uh, you know, choose which app to take, which subscription to buy. But, but this pandemic situation has sort of given a great amount of choice to the user because work from home, staying at home has given more time and more time means more consumption and that leads to more business, right? So from the DAU, from a MAU perspective, I think we have seen a good upsurge there and that has given us confidence to uh, sort of build our own content strategy for the next year. And the second part, which I would like to touch upon is the smart TV. Now, smart TV and connected devices has been the future and it is going to be the future with a penetration of 25 million plus units, you know, and, and all the large e-com players like Amazon and Flipkart also coming up with BBD and all sorts of, you know, carnival festive, uh, festive carnivals and, and India shopping festivals. We are also going to see a good amount of uptake of the connected devices. So we are all ready to sort of take that portion on and be there with uh, with the user at every stage, uh, at every point where where they would like to consume the content. So these are two key uh, you know key takeaways, and we have built very strongly during the pandemic last five six months. We have been building on these two uh, pillars very very uh, strongly. Sure, sure. Lastly, you know, concluding the introductory remarks, coming to you, Bharat. Uh, so so so, how do you see this situation? And and. Uh, any anything peculiar you you saw on your platform again from more of consumer per, you know perspective uh, if i if i look at it from from an external view probably my understanding is that it was earlier getting consumed you know uh, towards the end of the day but now probably are we seeing some scattered patterns out there yes hi everyone so uh, you know we at ttv bharat you know we are primarily a news ott platform 
uh, we are also a new kid on the block, probably about more than a year since we have gone live. Um, so what uh, patterns that we have observed is uh, nowadays people want to know, uh, you know, the COVID statistics, you know, uh, you know, how, you know, how this pandemic is uh, taking over the whole world, right? So the news is, uh, you know, is watched mostly, right? So the entertainment is one thing, but people are also uh, always uh, on smartphones looking for new updates on COVID you know, how my state is faring or how my city is faring, right? So is it safe to go out, right? So we have seen a good uptick uh, in consumption of news, right? So, and we operate uh, uh, in 13 different languages, right? So right from Jammu Kashmir to Kanyakumari, we have, uh, we are supporting several um, languages, right? And uh, states. So uh, we have definitely seen a good amount of uh, viewers, um, you know, looking for updates and uh, we made sure that we give them uh, timely updates uh, in terms of notifications. And we have also kept a COVID section on our portal so that, you know, once you click on it, we have uh, empowered uh, with infographics, you know, they can pick and uh, zoom into a particular district and see how many cases are there. So our, uh, um, you know, data people have invested a lot of time in you know, compiling all what they could get from sure. other platforms. Sure, sure, sure. So, so yes, thanks, thanks. I think you know, uh, thanks for these introductory remarks. I think you know, uh, there are definitely some some key messages and flavors coming up. You know, something like yes, it has increased. Uh, I think we are seeing growth in every you know sphere, be it discoverability, as something you know probably Rohit was talking about. Uh, you know, then uh, you know in terms of subscriptions, in terms of you know consumption in terms of maybe different genres getting, you know, experimented and, you know, um, people getting hooked to it. So yes, uh, that is growing, but yes, there's a huge, you know, gap out there. Now, uh, coming on to probably, you know, some, 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 uh, you know, with this growth, obviously, so, so with every technology adoption, perhaps it's not just with OTT. So you have first phase, which is more of adoption. And then comes the second phase, where, which is more about tuning, fine tuning, refining the things, and you know, uh, so to say, enhancing the experience and bringing more of the quality elements. Uh, so probably starting with you again, Tushar, I wanted to understand. So have we arrived at that stage first? And if yes, so so what are those probably you know key challenges? Do you see you know you see, uh, which probably the entire ecosystem needs to address to take it to the next level. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, a fact that happened when the pandemic started. So the government of India went out to all the ISPs <clears throat> to, uh, um, and especially the OTT providers uh, and ISPs, both of them, to reduce the bitrate ladder that we are using. Uh, so one of the challenges right at the very start was we had to run scripts to, you know, change our uh, manifest files to reduce the bitrate for mobile while on TV we wanted to give higher bitrate and so on and so forth. Um, so one of the issues that we see is optimization on the delivery. Uh, so, um, currently at Z5, we are only using H.264 as the compression technology for encoding the content. We are not using DP9 or AV1 or HEVC. So one of the investments that we are doing in this quarter, which is October to December, is to at least get HEVC up and running and see whether we want to start off with AV1 <clears throat> or DP9 for some of the Android uh, low-end devices. So one is a definite investment on video engineering. The second investment which we are seeing we will have to make because absolutely new cohorts of customers that are coming in uh, is on the recommendation and personalized search angle, especially with no, almost no shooting happening for almost three and a half, four months. There is hardly any and production ready entertainment content that has come in. It's mostly all the news content that has come in and in news, uh, search and recommendation is extremely, extremely important. Uh, if, if I am coming in from, um, you know, uh, Coimbatore versus and, and there are people here, right, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Uh, and me searching for breaking news will be 
I want to see very different kind of results than anyone else. So these are the two major challenges that I see and uh, which we which we saw uh, during this time and how the users were reacting. The third challenge that we saw was payment instruments and payment gateways and their consistency has posed challenges to us uh, during the pandemic period, especially April and May when a lot of subscription happened, you know, to watch our original content and uh, which was always behind the paywall and then no entertainment coming on the TV brought users uh, to, uh, you know, purchase a lot. Um, so th the third channel was a challenge which we saw, especially on the UPI side, there were a huge amount of failures that used to happen at the payment gateway. So I think on the infrastructure on payment, I see a challenge all across. Right. Not just OTT, but also e-commerce and so on. Mm -hmm. These are the three challenges which we saw very, very clearly. And then there are many more, which I'm sure other panelists will bring their experiences. Sure, sure. So, you know, getting getting some more flavors before getting some more flavors, I just, you know, like to hear, um, digress a bit and get in Vijay. So Vijay, uh, you know, you have been probably talking to each one of them, you know, or most of these people. Uh, from a different perspective. So what did you see in terms of, you know, these challenges, uh, which, which were, so to say, you know, uh, I would say momentary at that point of time. And now, which are those challenges which are still going to be there? Right. So I'll take this in, uh, I'll answer this in two parts. Right. Part number one, we saw the rise of content being consumed across the board. And one of the things that we also learned was it was not just limited to the younger crowd or the people um, around about 30 and uh, around 35 and, and below, right? Uh, the content was consumed even by people in the uh, middle age sections uh, where so there was a variety of content that could be consumed and uh, uh, each of them picked their own choices. Within a single house, we also realized that um, it's not necessary that everybody has to stick in front of the television and get themselves entertained by one particular channel or the other but rather each person within the house itself could go into different devices and start uh, consuming content. Right? This obviously put an extensive load on the infrastructure and, and the uh, internet network itself. And that is where players like us came into uh, a place where we were able to take a lot of that load onto us and then we were able to deliver it from the edge. Though we took a lot of stress as well. There are a lot of uh, content delivery networks out there that felt that stress and it took us at least about a month or two to start readjusting the way we end up delivering and the lockdowns did not help as well in order to uh, you know in, in a short term to build infrastructure but yeah uh, all in all a lot of uh, you know support from our uh, isp partners and from our customer to uh, you know bear with us during the challenging times and we were able to achieve that in about a month month and a half and we were consistently able to service the end customers and meet their expectations Okay, great. Um, I think yes, you know, probably you know, uh, these are these are two two sides of the same coin, and and uh, I see a lot of you know uh, reconciliation. So 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 probably that's uh, uh, one of the good things to see that uh, yes, there are challenges, but uh, at the same time, solutions are also uh, ramping up fast to to meet up the challenges. Uh, probably I would now um, you know come to uh, uh, you, Lokesh. Uh, so, in terms of discoverability, you know, we are, we are still talking about challenges. So, probably in terms of discoverability, uh, so, so what, are, what are those, you know, how, how important probably is search, you know, although now I think many of them are voice enabled and all that, but still I feel, you know, uh, when we look at maybe, you know, elder generation, uh, they, they, the one of the, you know, probably resistors for them to join OTT is discoverability and, you know, searching through the content and all that. So, so how important you feel, uh, you know, that element is and, and, and what in your way needs to be at rest. Uh, I tell you from what data I have at hand, uh, a large set of people do not really go and try and search at least in our platform. They preferably consume what is right in front of them. So what you're talking about is a niche use case where somebody is wanting to search for a specific movie and goes for searching. For most part, people are uh, consumers who do not want to indulge in decision making. They want to see 
things up front and they just want to click and yeah start no worries so discoverability predominantly gets solved by the factor of putting things right in front how do you identify what this guy wants so how do you personalize recommendation is where this problem gets solved most at search voice search all of these discovery mechanisms uh, are very small percentage of the use cases for most part the the other part of this question that you are talking about is search uh, on interfaces so tv interfaces usually are now coming all of them combined with a universal search mechanism so uh, android tv uh, are uh, obviously going to start now <laughs> today is the event there and for the android tvs to announce a very similar approach to how apple and amazon have been doing it so nice. universal cataloging and creating a unified search on all interfaces in one place so that even if you don't have the apps installed you'll come to understand where can you watch a particular content that you are scouting for that in itself is uh, in my opinion going to now become the most uh, user friendly case because uh, consumption of voice consumption of um, input uh, from across multiple ott apps in one place that's going to become the most easiest way for consumer to find content so the problem is more about creating the kind of content consumer would want to identify with the name and want to search for it. So it's going to be more of a branding exercise, more of a marketing exercise for a newer content that's coming in. For an any older content surfacing piece, now will get pretty much a solved problem. So how do you get to that tile in front of you in a unified interface is not going to be controlled by you by default. Okay, okay, fair point. Uh, I don't know. You know, I was I was recently interacting to. Uh, uh, an ISP, um, not a, a major ISP, but a B class, C class ISP, and you know, all of them are now trying fiber and trying content on top of it. You know, when they are looking for really content services, and one of the feedback they have is, you know, their users, you know, they are not very comfortable with this, um, you know, you know, minimal button uh, set, you know, remote on set top box, and uh, their users still want, you know, that channel approach, and they want to remember channels by numbers, and you know. So, so I think, yes, that, that still is, I don't know how, how that will evolve and how that's going to be bridged. Oh, linear channels are coming. Linear channels is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. People don't want the intent of, you know, search and choice. So right, that's, right. that's the solve. So you want to watch um, classics, you want to watch uh, something newer, you want to watch action, you want to watch comedy, you want to watch romance. We have those deep catalogs. Now, the mm -hmm. right approach would be that we are all wanting to is to create linear channels. So the user does not require to do any activity. The same TV behavior, enter, click, go. Go, oh, right, right. Uh, probably your views, Shahabuddin, on this, like, you know, uh, what is your view on this interface clutter out there? Sorry, you are, you're muted. Sorry, you're muted. In terms of discovery, you mean to say? Yes, you know, this clutter, you know, the first view is always that there seem to be too many posters and one gets kind of, you know, not puzzled, but probably confuzzled at times, you know, what to click. Uh, I would take a step back and step back and try to look at the content piece first, like especially content is more if enriched with metadata. Nowadays, search is more of contextual. Like people are searching for content with a context. In OTT, the problem is already pre-solved because most of us on this panel itself are itself is a content or a show is already pre-branded. There's heavily advertised content and people come looking for that. It's pre-populated. Now, based on the enriched metadata, we are able to identify our user segments and according to the content is programmed. So most of the it's pre-programmed people like when they come on to the show, they find it on the very first or second row of the tile, which is available. So discovery per se, it's already pre-segmented and basis of recommendation engine and metadata, we are able to program the right set of content. Talking about old shows, again, there is a search voice is again gaining up uh, more popularity on that. But uh, again, it's not that much where we have the data. People don't like hardly there's 10%, I would say is a very small portion of users who are trying to search for it. More or less is pre-programmed content, which is being consumed. Talking about clutter, 
again in terms of uh, usability and approach there are two segments i would say the millennials nowadays they go and search for videos gone are the days when people used to go and search on google you know it's video search nowadays which the millennials are doing so it's more of a video and contextual where people want to be more interactive and look for that piece of content okay okay uh, probably you know moving on to a different uh, um, uh, topic now coming to you amod um, so one of the one of the i think critical elements is how it is being distributed you know uh personally if if you know if i share my own examples you know i will not definitely want to name the platforms but you know uh, when i i am kind of you know swapping between two ott apps now probably one i find very smooth on the same network on the same infrastructure while as the other one i find at times glitchy okay and it's it's so something has probably you know other than codex and other how how all that is being managed probably distribution plays also a great role out there very important part so 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 i wouldn't say how critical it is it is critical but but what are some of the challenges probably you are facing in terms of you know distribution or how I, are you managing them yeah i think as an industry if we are to take the traditional tv channels head on we need to think beyond the standard distribution methods like our own apps and leverage the use of i don't know social media and even the ott aggregators i don't think that ott aggregation model has taken off here in india but i'm sure we'll see that in the coming years and i honestly believe we as an industry should support something like that we need to distribute in more than one place is what i'm saying if we are to win this battle with the channels <laughs> okay so so you you talked about how to probably you know distribute it and you know make it yeah. available to the in more than one place yeah, yeah. so so i i wanted uh, you know to talk about another form of distribution which is about you know getting the content delivered and distributed uh, not just the discovery so probably you know um, i may i may want rohit to come in here and you know share his views uh, how how is this distribution of content uh, being managed and how complete how what are some challenges which you are managing out there or if if you are facing some challenges sure so you know once again i'll touch this with you know with two instances that we've had right first is when we uh, so originally we've got a platform which is essentially a website our apps right and we used to actively have content running on our website as well as a youtube channel then when we ended up launching a web series a couple of years back we decided that we are going to have uh, you know promote our apps really and make sure the content is exclusively sitting on the apps and that way we cut out our youtube channel from the equation right and what we want ready for was because the web series did very well we ended up getting a massive amount of traffic on our website and that essentially got us by surprise so in terms of the distribution mix where we got a hit is we essentially underestimated the amount of people who would consume our cdn resources and before we knew it uh, we were already overbilling and we had run over our quotas so uh, the learning from this is how do you uh, before you're going to be launching a new series right you need to estimate your visitors very well and you need to work out the unit economics right so for instance i may have a quota which is x how much is it going to cost me right if i am within the quota and what happens as soon as you exceed that quota is there an overarch charge or does your provider give you alternatives which are flexible that's going to help handle this traffic so so that's been the learning when it comes to pure distribution cdn point of view Uh, how we handle this today so today we end up distributing our content across our website our apps our social media channels and we end up syndicating a lot of this content to other partners as well okay. now they work very well because if i've got see any of the panelists here i work with any one of them who got a massive captive audience uh, by having a content sitting on their platforms uh, it's easily discovered by the audience they already have right that's a straight win and the most selfish way for us is it takes the heat off my my tech guys because i know somebody else is taking the hit to consume all the content yeah th that's our which way yeah okay okay uh, maybe satyajit you would want to add something to you know this distribution and cd and you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, so to say puzzle out there in this entire uh, picture yeah so uh, when when uh, we like to distribute our content we look at which are the platforms the end users likely to consume content and in, and in this instance i would just like people to be aware of where i'm speaking from i'm speaking from kerala where uh, we have this ott platform which is an exclusive malayalam ott platform so it really does not have any competition as such 
So we have started uh, uh, ensuring it is available on all the mobile, mobile platforms initially. And we've started distributing it on the television platforms as well. For instance, for the Fire Stick and stuff. So we, though we don't have Fire Stick right now, we are developing that uh, going forward so that it becomes available on all the television platforms and the Android TVs and uh, uh, the Roku boxes for the international audience that way. We are trying to cover as many of the devices that are in front of the user and that way uh, ensure that the distribution of the content is optimum for every user. Uh, having said that, uh, because it's an exclusive Malayalam platform and we are providing both news and entertainment, mm -hmm. the user is, uh, once the user comes in, he is, uh, he is uh, you know, uh, showered with a lot of content. Uh, we uh, upload roughly about 80 to 85 pieces of content every day, which is a huge number. So for him to reach that, content that he's looking for, it is not very easy by just showcasing something right on his face. So it is not just about movies or it, it can be uh, the latest news that could be something happening right now that, that needs to be up there. So the other pieces of content get, get pushed down. So that's where, uh, you know, in terms of uh, searching and delivering the content also it becomes important on our platform because uh, it, it's very important for the system to understand what the viewer actually wants to see. The, uh, the uh, effort is to put forth the content which the user is used to seeing and place it there so that when the user comes in, each user, there, there, there will be users coming in for watching movies, there will be users watching uh, live news, there will be users, users watching in uh, web series and all of that. So based on whatever he has watched in the past, and based on what he's likely to watch, we like to place the content there and then get it across to him. Uh, in terms of CDN, that was the other part of your question. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, I mean, we have, sorry? Yeah, yeah, please uh, go. Please go yeah, we, have, uh, uh, we have tied up with a company who does the CDN bit of it, which is uh, providing us with intelligent technology, which is able to realize what is the device at the other end of the, uh, 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 of the user. So uh, the user may be using uh, maybe a, s a small end device or a high end uh, television screen. The uh, system is able to realize what is the user using and also what is the content he's watching. Accordingly, it is able to place the renditions of the content to the end user. So that is how we bridge this gap between what we uh, upload and what the uh, actual content user is, is seeing on the screen. Okay. I hope I was making sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd, I'd like to get Vijay here. You know, Vijay, uh, is, is there any, any best practice for this? Or, or, you know, we have to go by this Taylor approach, you know, where probably every uh, platform will have its own mix and own, uh, so to say, strategy to uh, solve this issue? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Look, uh, today, as far as uh, a content delivery network or, or uh, a technology platform that comes in place when it comes to distribution, especially, right? So um, a lot of customers are already practicing and it's always a best practice in order to have multi-bit rate approach where you're looking at whatever is the end user's available bandwidth, you're delivering the best possible experience to the end customer. Look, today in India and globally as well, customers are coming in droves. Customers are consuming content in, in droves. It's not restricted to certain timings because of uh, you know uh, the situation the pandemic has created. Content is being consumed at any time in the day, and then it's consumed from all nooks and corners as well. Right? It's not just restricted like earlier times to tier one or tier two cities. Now we are seeing content being consumed even in tier three cities, and then it's going lower down to remote areas as well where people are uh, consuming content. So when customers are coming in from different points, uh, parts of the country, the network in India is not as mature uh, as it should have been for the way the content is being consumed, right? So you have uh, 4G networks uh, in, in all uh, tier two, tier three cities, but then when it goes deeper down, the network percolation of the quality is not that very strong. So you will see difficult network challenges that end up coming. And then again, the device distributions, you virtually have every week a new device that's being announced, right? So there are so many different devices. Now these devices could be high-end resolution ones um, and there are different screen sizes. So 
a technology or a platform that is delivering to the end user needs to understand the end user's devices, needs to understand the network conditions, needs to understand what would be the best experience for the end user to have a quick start time, to have a consistent experience, buffer-free viewing experience, because that is what is going to bring in repeat customers. When you have repeat customers, you're going to continue subscribing. They're going to spend more money. They're going to continue a long-term relationship with you, right? So it's, it's, whether it's an OTT platform or a CDN player like us or other platform partners that you engage in in order to give a complete OTT solution, the end result is the end user's expectations and the end user's experience. If we together are able to solve the problem for the customer, we are able to give consistent experience, whether they come from a smart TV, an Android TV, or they're coming with mobile devices, or it's laptops and desktops, whatever kind of experience, whatever kind of device the customer wants uh, to consume content or wants to be entertained. So we are a bunch of uh, you know en uh, entertainment crazy people here in India, right? So everybody wants uh, entertainment in some or the other form. and. A technology needs to be geared up in order to serve all of these different challenges to the end customer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we did. We recently did a study uh, uh, which was around connected consumer, connected Indian. Uh, so we tried to understand, okay, what is the device which is probably you know uh, penetrated most after smartphones among smartphone users? Which connected device? So it is smart TV. And even if you check, you know, the wish list or the desire, I think number one, again, you know, people are looking for smart TV, owning a smart TV after a smartphone. So yes, uh, I think smart TV as a form factor is, you know, growing and gaining momentum. And I think, you know, all of you guys, uh, I'm sure you're already prepared for it, but uh, probably there's something more which needs to be done uh, to, to, to meet this, uh, you know, demand on out there. Now, uh, coming to a different, uh, you know, uh, one more uh, maybe area which I wanted to understand is uh, there's always you know security if we talk of security on on these platforms and we have we have we have known so many issues out there right from selling uh, you know smart TVs at at probably a, you know discounted price which was a classical case in US. Uh, to, to many other things uh, for data and other such things. And I don't know how, how robust right now the smart TV ecosystem is uh, with regards to security. Uh, so, so coming to you probably, uh, Sorgia, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, investment plans, if I may come on that side, uh, you, you feel you have, or if you don't have right now, you know, what, 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 what would be a typical kind of, investment plan with respect to uh, catering to security, maybe to CDN and, and other such kind of elements going forward? Yeah, uh, I think uh, the first part uh, would be obviously security. The other part, I'll start from the other part, is basically the customer promise. Now, customer promise is a very big uh, word, but then, you know, during the process of delivering the content or giving an experience, we sometimes uh, are not in a situation to give a hundred percent, you know, or fulfill the hundred percent of promise. But at the same point in time, the substantial amount of investment and, you know, effort in terms of research, in terms of, uh, you know, working in the back end and how do we sort of live up to the expectation is something that is very key. Now, uh, coming back to that, uh, we are the only OTT platform right now in India, which is, you know, giving podcast and video in the same platform. So Epicon has been present in almost 55 smart TVs. Uh, barring LG and Samsung, which will be done in, in few uh, months. But overall, what we have been seeing is that the smart TV consumption is in the hilt. It is at the maximum. And, and there is a consumption pattern that we have seen all throughout the day. I mean, starting from 11 o'clock in the morning till night 2 o'clock. And we, we, when, we, when we start slicing and dicing those data, we have seen that family watching is in the epicenter, right? And when family watching happens, everybody comes, friends, family members and everything are in the house and then the sort of, you know, they do a binge watching and a binge eating kind of a situation in, in weekends. So we see that. So that's one pattern that we are sort of living up to the expectation in, in terms of distribution, in terms of making robust apps for the TV. The second part, which is uh, more to do with the situational aspect is the cinema to home. Now with the pandemic coming into the picture, you know, the, the movie theaters, the, the, the multiplexes are a little remote as of now, while, you know, there, there may be you know, uh, unlocking happening, but then, but still there is a good amount of consumption that we can expect next three to four months. 
at least two quarters from now where you know movie consumption is going to increase so there's a lot of time spent which is going to happen on the long format which is the movies and smart tvs and connected devices like fire stick apple tv and some of the chromecast devices are going to be the uh, the lead runners in terms of giving that consumption coming back to the security part of the cdn yes we have been working on two technologies very very uh, aggressively one is the brotly technology of compression which is for the podcast which is for the audio side of it and the zzip which is the zzip is for the video segment where we 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 don't compromise with the segment identity or resolution of the product but still ensure that there's a good amount of compression done and the delivery is up to the mark so when you're tapping and the buffering time is beyond 4 seconds that's not a good situation to be in a ott uh, scenario so we promise that as far as security is concerned we have couple of items there so we have security bots that we have sort of implemented already uh, with a partner and that sort of gives us a good amount of uh, signaling method or monitoring you know outputs on from time to time whether it is a dark web trying to attack a staging server or our main server or if there is any attack which or a, or a potential attack that may be happening you know people are trying to sort of get from the dark web and then trying to hit the 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 overall platform uh, backend so we have all the systems where uh, where we are not having and now we have implemented we have seen a phenomenal amount of readiness from our end and that sort of has given us one step ahead uh, from the perpetrators to see that okay are we ready are we not ready and what are the kind of you know checks and balances we need to put so we have pretty much uh, last 4 5 months we pretty much worked on our cloud my cloud management and as well as cdn and implemented lot of this compression and security system in place so that pretty much from the back end to the front end we have got things sorted so so that's good like uh, you know the epic of ott will remain on and then yeah. <laughs> the investments are there that, to that's the effort that's the effort yeah yeah so bharat uh, you know this is of course an important question so i'll i'll come uh, across to each of the panelists but bharat you know just from you i want to understand on this investment part you know what are those probably you know key areas where where, where you think your investments will go or or next you know maybe year or a couple of years yes so uh, the important thing is uh, there are two things one is uh, we want to look at uh, uh, how do we present the relevant content to the users like you know as you you know the panel uh, colleagues have told uh, that you know you have to reduce the clutter so you you have to give the specific pieces of content to the user so since we are news we we have more than 50 to 60 categories right so sports you know the ibl is on so you know you have business you have markets you have um, you know health category right so you have to give the relevant content to the user so obviously you know recommendation engines play a critical role in that so they understand the user behavior you know which content is the user watching frequently so you present that content to the user so that is one of our uh, next uh, you know key investments in that area so giving the user the right uh, you know ways to discover the content in a in a few clicks like you know in one or two he should reach to that and uh, the other investments which we want to do is on the security side you know because at the same time we we have we are seeing you know uh, since we are a news platform right so uh, obviously there has been a lot of attacks in the uh, the chinese um, you know hackers right so they have been targeting the indian publishers right okay i think some some issue with bharat's connectivity uh, probably you know uh, if i could move on to rohit very quickly you know uh, what kind of investment areas you know you are looking over next a uh, couple of years sure uh, so faisal when it comes to our site right we are not purely uh, uh, video content a large part of our offerings also involves uh, text pieces right we do a lot of uh, opinion based pieces on our website as well right so in, in that sense we really cater to two different audience sets one uh, that enjoys these sort of web series or short videos and another an audience that likes reading right so it could be opinion pieces it could be news pieces so on and so forth so uh, you know i think the what covid has really done is uh, because we are running lean we've really been questioning uh whether we really need to have everything that we have today and what we can do to uh, make it uh, cheaper and essential right so in that sense the first question we are asking ourselves is where does your majority of your traffic come from so we get about 90% of our traffic uh, coming in from the mobile web right if, if this is the case 
maybe we should relook at our website and figure out whether it should be mobile first. So we have a responsive website, yes, right? But did we build for the mobile and then grow out? No, we haven't done that, right? So it's something that we are questioning and uh, we will perhaps do that in the, in, in the coming years. The second question we've asked ourselves is uh, having your Android and iOS apps. It's nice to have them, but it's very cluttered, right? When users install these apps with so many other apps, what are the odds uh, they're going to be opening your apps and what value add are you going to give these people by installing your apps? Right. So okay. to put this in context, uh, none of our content is paid and we are widely distributed across our platforms and other platforms. So that there is no question of people paying for content or, or trying to maintain some sort of a payment history, which makes it necessary for us to have these apps. So do we need a PWO going forward? Maybe a progressive web app might solve problems for us. So a lot of the thinking that we're doing from a user perspective is mainly in terms of making their experience mobile friendly, right? And from a backend perspective, because we syndicate content a lot, we'd like to have a system where uh, it's basically plug and pay, right? Tomorrow I sign up with five different partners. It should be that easy for me to start a stream from my end to them. And I provide them with my data, my metadata, and then uh, we can go live fast. It shouldn't have to be a manual process where you reinvent the wheel each time. So, so those are the two areas that we're looking at. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, next I would want to understand from Lokesh about the same thing. And then, you know, we will start. So there are already some questions which are popped up. So we'll start answering them also, you know, gradually. But just, you know, Lokesh, yeah. your view on the investments. Uh, sure. So there are uh, definite investments in broadly four categories. One is uh, content creation, uh, identifying what users are wanting to watch based on data. Second one is insurance that what we are producing is we are able to present as proper, uh, what you would say, formats to users. So improving our delivery formats. Uh, third is more personalization focus. And fourth, in my opinion, the most important aspect, the way I put it, is solving the whole conundrum around payments in India. These okay. are broad areas that we want more and more focus from our side. We're trying to build most of the tech around it in house. And uh, for certain cases, we are open to partnering with uh, somebody who has deep expertise also. So we are you know, looking at how we can improve the overall discovery, overall experience and solve the whole part where user wanting to watch a content is dropping off because PG is not performing. Okay. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll have this question for other panelists also. I think this is an important one because you know, this also gives us a view of, uh, what's, uh, exactly going to happen with this segment. Uh, so, so just ask, you know, this is a question from, from the audience that how do we see edge computing helping uh, to change this OTT experience in coming years, uh, essentially again from tier two, tier three consumers. Any any views on this? To be honest, edge computing is not going to help here. A large part of this information is uh, serving through CDNs. The compute aspect is not the most complex uh, yeah. aspect here. It's the delivery. And and I think I think most of these devices which are you know delivering the content, the end devices, they're already a lot of like they're they're very intelligent and they have very you know good power of compute out there. Yeah. So. Handle devices today carry more firepower than computers five years back. Absolutely. You can do on device computation for AI and neural networks now. Mm -hmm. you know, the, these are mid tier devices that are now coming with neural enabled chips. Right, right, right. So there's one more question, like what are the learnings from post COVID? I think we have been talking all about this, you know, what are the learnings from post COVID and, and how are we seeing the behavior changing? I think we have, we have, uh, you know, fairly, uh, you know, uh, answered this in depth over, over uh, the, you know, past, past, whatever, 40, 30, 40 minutes or, or one hour we have been talking about. Uh, so coming to you probably, uh, you know, uh, Shahabuddin, I want to understand about this investments. So what are those key three, four areas where you feel you will be investing over the next uh, one year or so? 
primarily it would be content so we obviously looking at content and obviously and on the other aspect of content is making it more enriched in terms of metadata which is a little bit of manual plus a technological help like a while our content which is being played the metadata genre the specific scene is there it's a comedy scene who are the i know characters or artists what role play is happening all, all that is enriched in a metadata it will really boost how you can program the content for a user depending on his persona if a user is watching a content if he likes comedy content is it a stand up comedy is it kids comedy or adult comedy basis of that you can program the content for a user okay. so today there is lot of clutter in the market what users are looking for both content and experience at same point of time you have to personalize the experience for the user like normally at all what we believe in first user experience when the user installs an app there should be nothing coming between the user and his first view they should be easily able to watch the piece that he came for okay. of course then there we have a single sign in where you can easily subscribe and then watch the content which is behind the paywall because we are a sword model we normally keep first episode free and rest of the world, you know episodes are paid so i think content is one very precise investment which we are doing in terms of that and next is a user experience we are trying to build a lot more pieces in terms of a recommendation engine which we are trying to upgrade as i spoke about metadata enhancement and enrichment and third obviously in terms of uh, infra isn't a challenge i would say precisely being on aws and cloud technologies computing and delivery is not a challenge we recently we did a overall over the overall delivery network as well so it's more on like a content and i would say content production sure sure amod your views on this investment piece like uh, you know you are you are pretty much new into the system yeah uh, can you hear me my bluetooth just failed so i'm just yeah yeah we can hear with my earphones my camera also is somehow i'm not seeing myself anyway, you can hear me right yeah yeah we can hear you amod yeah, yeah so basically like yeah like you said we are the new kid on the block so i can see three areas where we are going to invest heavily in the next year or so uh, okay so you have asked me to start your video i'm clicking okay anyway i'll just keep talking uh, so yeah so three areas that i can see are going to be the key for us the first one is of course the content because we are the new ott content is going to differentiate us from all these giants on this panel right now uh the second part i'll say is of course the user experience i believe that right now being fast is the name of the game like someone just said the new generation they simply don't have patience like we all have uh, i won't say we all because i'm relatively quite young right now <laughs> anyway so yeah. we all know that one of the main reasons apps like you know tiktok so the huge upsurge was due to their user interface it was very simple and there was almost an instantaneous click to play time almost no buffering whatsoever so i think the quicker we can get the user to watch the content he wants the better the engagement and you know better the churn rate the second thing would be how our apps compare with the giants how right. our means our own app you know people are going to compare the best apps in the business so we have to ensure that we have to provide a seamless experience on all devices and finally the third area of course security i think i I'll, i'll talk more from the consumer side of things we all know that the more popular uh, platform gets the more attacks they get right. and the worse yeah and the worse kinds of attacks are a breach in you know data like personal or financial information now many otts they process their own payments and i think that a major investment should be on things uh, you know securing the payment data i even say that where it's not possible we have to offload that responsibility to the payment processors never touching that info in the first place as far as personally identifiable information i think that also has to be secured and we need to manage this database access very tightly with encryption using salts where possible of course all of it has to be delicately balanced against the experience a user has so i guess content user experience and security will be our three main areas great great uh vijay i want i want your views here because you have you know of course you know all of these you know learned people have a global view but since you are you you may be interacting with your customers you know globally as well so so is the investment in line or or we are missing out something here so yeah uh, look at any given point in time when you're looking at technology the investment is always falling short right because 
uh, with each day that we are moving forward, we are looking at newer technologies coming. Uh, the end users or the customer expectation is constantly, uh, you know, the, they are asking way beyond what the network today can handle. Right? right. There was one other question that earlier you had asked about edge computing. Now yeah. I just take one step to explain exactly what you mean, right? So um, Lokesh had also mentioned about, uh, you know, there are smarter chips in the device, so computing can happen at the device end itself, right? But those are high-end devices. Still, the percolation of those kind of devices would take a long time, right? So most of the computing needs to happen either at the origin, and then you're looking at that content going to the end user or the computational results going to the end user, does take a lot of time due to latency of the content getting uh, delivered to the end user, right? But a lot of this can today actually be taken to the edge of the internet or closer to the end customer and decisions can be made. Like for example, in an OTT scenario, we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, 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 transcoding becoming one key aspect. Uh, while content, uh, there are different formats to the content and then, uh, the, you know, also different bit rates that needs to be changed. Now, instead of having to do that at the origin and then the content getting transferred to the end user, this can happen on the fly itself and be delivered to the end user. It can happen at the edge. Now, another scenario is with publishers and some of the OTTs, a few OTTs that actually run based on ads instead of subscriptions, right? In those kind of scenarios, when you have a few ad impressions, your decision making to pick the right kind of ad to be served to the end user. It would make a lot more sense if those decisions were actually taken at the edge, right? So you could write some functional codes in such a way and then deploy it at the edge uh, through your edge servers that could actually be taking the final decision in order to deliver what kind of ad that needs to go to a person belonging in a certain geography, right? So a highly personalized experience when it comes to ads, highly personalized in terms of content, um, whether it's uh, video content or it's, uh, uh, you know, media content that ends up reaching the customer. So Edge, right now, what we are seeing uh, in terms of Edge computing is taking a significant amount of uh, interest across the United States and Europe as well. And this will start becoming the trend as you go forward um, through the course until we see a lot of devices actually getting that capability of computing uh, in, within the device itself, right? So until then, there is a gap that needs to be bridged. So investments are coming out in newer areas and newer technologies are um, helping customers decide on what would their key investments end up being over the next three, six months or, uh, you know, over the next one year. Sure, sure. So gentlemen, before I have, you know, probably final words from you, just you know let's let's try to you know answer some more questions so so although we have we have touched most of these topics but if some of you would like to uh, probably you know delve a bit deeper so so for instance we have a question around you know uh, content personalization so so how are ott uh, platforms managing it and you know uh, how is ai playing a role there so so anyone would want to uh, answer this i guess probably lokesh you were talking about you know personalization is definitely you know one of the uh, focus areas would you like to take oh, definitely <laughs> yeah there is there is no way out we have to cater to individual needs a guy who is watching short forms in the morning and long form in the night needs to be given appropriate kind of content when he is on that part of the day on that kind of a device now that is clear personalization mm. uh, it's not just on content it's the time of the day it's the kind of device he or she is using we have to go deep into the kind of context of shows in fact uh, a lot of our movies and shows which are currently uh, having a, a single kind of a genre now needs to have more micro genres coming into picture so that we can identifiably rate uh, a similarity score better there. Okay. We have one more uh, question. So it's about how can we improve the experience of users? And I think there are, there are so many ways of probably doing that. But I think this is specifically about AR, VR, you know. Uh, I don't know, Sorgia, would you like to take on? Because, you know, I guess the content which is on your channel is, you know, one would like to get immersed into it sometimes. So, so do you feel AR, VR can play a role there? Yeah, I think definitely. I think that's the future because uh, AR definitely uh, can be the future where 
you know especially it works well in the kids content in the kids genre where where we see that you know whether it is a individual mobile consumption or a smart tv consumption wherever they get a chance to sort of uh, engage with the content i think the engagement with the content is very key i think ar sort of enhances that and especially it works well on the short form content because where where you come up with filters you come up with lot of uh, you know different extensions of ar that can be sort of given out to the users to experience that mm-hmm. i think with our uh, with our uh, complete content stack uh, we we are building on the kids genre very very aggressively and and all of these are are in the part of the road map that we are building uh, already and it's it's there and uh, what we also see is that not only this but also the 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 video player also forms a very very important part of the overall experience right. so it's it's ar vr plus the engagement with the video player i think we are uh, spending substantial amount of time in building a very intelligent video player uh, whether natively done or taken a third party i think that is the maximum amount of engagement that the user does uh, while while consuming the content so building all of this which is the front interface part and what we see is that overall uh, i think my fellow panelists will also agree is that the three tap you know playback is something that everybody um, aspires for as as at content providers as ott players so i think the whole effort is towards that so this is these are some of the investment points and and some of the achievement points that we would like to you know sort of uh, go to this milestones and then and then uh, you know sort of experience the customer feedback okay we have one more question which is around security we we did talk about but you know uh, user is wanting to specifically inquire what are those uh, you know specific uh, security challenges on ott platform and and there's also a question of how to reduce piracy and increase platform revenues i think you know of course you would not want to tell anyone how to increase revenues but uh, uh, i think ott is all uh, what it is also helping in reducing uh, piracy i don't know i i want your views on it so i would like to take that facet of your yeah yeah sure. so india has a huge market for piracy right? it's a supply and demand curve hmm so people are looking for any india today especially people are okay and they opt in for installing certain apps or uh, like side uh, sidelines of apk files which are at a big risk of taking consumer data Mm-hmm. in terms of pre- privacy or their financial data can also be at risk but people do install certain apps and they are able to consume content which is on the premium side of it but on the other side we see a lot of behavioral shift in the user where they are trying to pay for a premium content based on the experience that you provide to them right that is you know precisely timely content delivery so it goes hand in hand i would say but again privacy piracy is a big challenge especially when it comes to con- you know premium content and we face a lot of it okay. every new show that is launched so like initial couple of weeks is a big uh, anti piracy you know of uh, race we need to do and do a lot of strikes on people who try to pirate the content and upload it on different mediums and forms on social media okay. also i'd like to add to what uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my colleague chabudin was uh, telling over here now typically when it comes to ott ott content and we are talking about security yeah it's one of the biggest challenges today the industry is facing in terms of securing content making sure that it's not illegally used elsewhere uh, somebody who does not have the right to a certain content uh, you know reproducing it and delivering it to mass uh, people out there right and that's a sure shot hit for revenues as well right at the end of the day your subscribers can find a certain content free of cost elsewhere why will they want to pay and then consume it with you right so there are a few methods that a lot of our customers uh, end up using during several conversations that we've been able to help our customers as well drm seems to be one of the solutions that helps because you're encrypting your content at the end of the day post you've done uh, you know your your transcoding of the content and then you have a specific license key to each individual user um who is able to use that key to decrypt the content and it's only consumed once after that it's gone right and what we've also noticed in a few customers who deliver live linear television channels is uh, there is uh, loss of stream and once again over there a, a 
a significant uh, a challenge can be averted or probably uh, uh, you know a significant challenge can be taken head on is by using drm uh, solution by encrypting your live stream content as well however these two solutions as of now still seem to be fairly uh, expensive and uh, customers are finding different ways to incorporate these security solutions sure sure i think i think you know we we have almost reached to to the conclusion of this program this session we have answered uh, almost many of you know many of the questions there are two three more left but some of them are just around observations uh, we'll try to see if we, if we can take them up uh, you know uh, once we uh, proceed ahead uh, so you know just starting with the concluding uh, you know remarks from each one of you uh probably you know i would want to start with satyajit you uh, so i think there is no denial or doubt about the growth of ott prospects of ott uh so probably other than that what what kind of opportunities do you see in ott maybe in terms of content in terms of technology in terms of user experience in terms of quality so what are those opportunity areas uh, uh, i would want to understand from you so uh, probably i would like to divide these opportunities into two one is the content opportunity and the other is the technology opportunity so in terms of content opportunity here is the evolution of a new medium and in our part of the world where we can create content which is special to our uh, the diversity of people around us and keep them happy and thus engage with them on a continuous basis rather than uh, you know allowing the user to jump from one ott platform to the other create something uh, genuine and engaging at a content level and uh, engage with the end consumer that's one of it and uh, this uh, um, incidentally uh, there's a lot of uh, you know very very high uh, cost content that is coming in all the time these days and uh, unlike that i mean at manorma what we believe is to create content which is smart but at the same time economic and is able to reach out to the audience as well so we are uh, looking at investing in that kind of content going forward so that we are able to engage with the consumers in a more meaningful way not just uh, as a, a you know a movie that comes in flashes in and goes out and Uh, the next movie you will look for whichever platform it's on rather we would like to give more engaging content in a uh, uh, in a realistic manner that's one thing on the other part in terms of technology uh, we would like to uh, ensure that the the end consumers able to uh, uh, reach out to manorva max from wherever they are that is uh, when i say wherever they are it's not about the location it's about what is the device that is right in front of them which on which they would like to con- uh, to consume the content so right. it could be uh, f- from a mobile to it can be uh, you know the uh, the the laptop screen or even the television which is near you or whatever we should be able to deliver content there so okay. the, we are trying to build up in investments in uh, in that direction so that we are able to deliver the content to everybody and uh, anybody who wants to see it we can just uh, see it the click of a button sure sure uh bharat coming to you very quickly your views on this same thing like what are those opportunity areas in the ott sorry you're muted you're muted bharat so i mean uh, since we uh, are from the news genre uh, you know the opportunities are huge on the ott so we have visibility to the whole universe right so we have um, all age groups looking for news uh, not only the elderly but you know you have young kids uh, looking at news but also in terms of you know we we also have to categorize the news it should not be like a mundane news uh, that you throw at them right so the covid stats and regular political news right so you have to differentiate yourself uh, from the other um, you know news channels like you know it should be a uh, you know the opinion section has to be given uh, you know you have to uh, get the senior editorial people um, you know talk a little bit about the burning issues right. so um, so you you try to get the new audience on board it right at the same time uh, the opportunities in the sense you know because we are multilingual 
uh, we cover 13 languages so uh, you know it also gives us because our reporters are there in every uh, nook and corner you know and we are the hyper local uh, app that means you know we cover the three levels right so this is phenomenal see all the leading news um, ott platforms only cover metro news right sure which i think people you know it's a dime a dozen right so but if you what is happening in tier 2 tier 3 cities you know that makes more sense you know that uh, gives them more um, you know the inclusiveness so that they come back to your content all the time so if you're covering you know we have, we have given them a district selection so once they select or once they install the app in initial screens we ask for the district so and we throw the relevant content to them right so their district you know what is happening in their surrounding areas so sure, sure. investments we are making actually okay amod your views on the same uh, yeah faisal my camera is i think gone for good anyway, no worry no worry uh, i'll quickly summarize as uh, opportunities go i'll say we have i i'll say we have two things right now the first one is we right now have a great opportunity to grab a huge chunk of the traditional television audience one because of the pandemic and of course because of the ongoing digital penetration to tier 2 and 3 cities i think we should really make the most of these two things right now and the second thing would be i am really excited to see what the world of vr and ar brings us in the next few years i think that's where the future opportunity lies and uh, you know as a sort of the harbingers of technology i think ott platforms should take maximum advantage of when not if that technology hits mainstream it's really a matter of when i mean not if so those we are and grabbing the audience right now those would be my two opportunities to look for look forward right now sure sure sorgia could you add uh, your views on to the same thing yeah i think uh, the i think the opportunities are threefold i think the first one would be a lot of advertisers are looking at cohorts that they would like to target so i think on the avod front there is a good amount of opportunity in terms of monetization for all the ott players to sort of uh, have the right uh, user segment target them properly with in conjunction with the advertiser and it can sort of scale, you can scale, sort of scale the monetization bit on that i think that's one bit the second bit is of course being a uh, being a con and tech that is content and technology uh being together so it's a, it's one of its very unique proposition or a hybrid proposition that can uh, non linearly scale up on its own so i think the spread and the distribution is very key and internationally we can uh, as as ott players be present in multiple countries in multiple uh and and sort of uh, targeting multiple audience there and the third bit which is the svot piece which is the behind the paywall is and of course uh, as all of them spoke about content being one of the key drivers of course content and technology there also plays a lot of importance and and we are going to see that how do we grab the um, users attention in terms of taking a subscription to watching the content i think that's going to spell out uh, the success there through better ux better latency rates and and of course overall world class technology in the back end i think all of this go hand in hand with an opportunity sure um shahabuddin your views on the same like what are those opportunity areas for ott over the next probably years i think with the expansion of the digital area and availability of the infrastructure in tier 2 tier 3 cities and the explosion we have in the price downside of you know data uh, most of the you know consume consumptions which we at our all balaji we get is from tier 2 tier cities where people are trying to con- consume long form and short form content both so in terms of uh, future i would say obviously content we need to look at more on the way the data which we have we need to generate content which is more engaging to the consumers that we get one and second have much more better user experience for the user because user is paying for content and experience i just want to you know revisit that point you know the easily precisely timely content delivery so and technology has got a big role to play over there especially when tier 2 tier cities there was a uh, uh, cities in india where still their connectivity is a huge challenge we do get subscription but then we get a lot of user feedback as well where they are not able to browse or access the content so that is where we are working with the partners in terms of technology where we can you know transmit in sd and try to play in sd so still the user gets a better watching experience 
I think it's more on like the content plus the delivery of the content. I would say the best sure. user experience you can deliver. Sure, sure. Uh, Rohit, your your views, your closing remarks on the same thing. Sure. So I see a couple of opportunities. Uh, one being uh, creating regional content, right? I think uh, a a lot of the smaller areas perhaps don't have as much OTT content as uh, say the big cities do, right? Secondly, trying to experiment with new formats that are popular. So short format content, uh, the kind right. that you see on an Instagram or a TikTok, is something to look at, right? Uh, third is distribution of this content. I think it. I genuinely believe that partnering with other players, uh, whether it is trying to syndicate your content, whether it is bundling your content uh, as part of their offerings, you know, uh, helps everybody in terms of discovering content and could be a way for you to monetize your content as well uh, with an agreement that you might have with the partner you're teaming up with. Uh, from a tech point of view, I think the big challenge that um, at least the smaller players like us tend to have is we have limited budgets, right? Now, if I want to put out my content on different platforms, uh, the market is very fragmented. So if I'm working with say a Samsung or an Apple or whoever else they might be in the market, everybody has a very distinct tech stack that they work with, which means uh, expenses towards developers, trying to understand framework and essentially additional costs trying to get live on a different platform. So I think I see an opportunity there where uh, the industry as a whole needs to work together to make it easier for people to distribute across platforms. I know it's a tall order, but but that's something that's going to make life easier. And, uh, you know, yeah, maybe that's going to be a reality one day, which is going to make life easy for all of us. Yeah, those are the opportunities. Sure, sure. Lokesh, your, your views on the same thing? Um, so I put it this way that uh, we need a Game of Thrones of our own. At least 10 million concurrency of users. That's the challenge I would say we need to have. The moment that happens, we have a content that's an engaging content to the extent that people are like left, right, center, wanting to watch it day one when it premieres, uh, when the show hits uh, the, the episodes, the, the moment they go live, there is a whole set of people dying to watch it. I think that's where we would have cracked. That's where I believe all tech challenges will be gearing up. You can handle a 10 million concurrency. Can you handle a 15 million concurrency? I mean, apart from IPL, nothing of that proportion has ever happened here, right? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, Vijay, Vijay, uh, would you like to have some some concluding remarks on the same thing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, look, technology is, uh, or, or technology platforms are uh, you know, essentially looking up to let you do the dream and while we do the dirty job, right? So we continuously go on there, invest, we increase, we keep expanding our infrastructure. Uh, like, like currently uh, in the first half of 2020, we've uh, in fact doubled our uh, capacity and by the end of this year, we're gonna further double it again. So three folds, we're gonna be increasing. Uh, we are bringing in a lot of other technologies like edge computing, we are looking at security, How the, the uh, what kind of challenges our customers are facing. We are constantly looking at those aspects and we are trying to help solve those problems well in advance. Uh, we are investing significantly in terms of uh, making robust platform and technology investments across the board. Um, we will be geared for the kind of challenges that you're looking at as you move forward when it comes to distribution of your content or ensuring that your content is being uh, it delivers seamlessly to your end customers, no matter where they come from, the kind of experience that end users demand um, without understanding the kind of challenges that are there between the content being produced all the way to the content being consumed on the end user's device. Right? So my thought over here is uh, organizations like us, whether it's a CDN or it's a, uh, it's a generic platform, we are all part of your overall business ecosystem, work closely with your partners, uh, engage your partners on a consistent basis, uh, have those discussions around what your challenges are so that your partners are aware of where your challenges are coming from and how uh, you know each one can put that puzzle together for you and solve those problems together as right. a unit. At the end of the day, we are looking to solve a problem for a business and for an end user. Right? Sure. We are all pieces of the puzzle uh, between these two. Ends. Sure, sure. Well, I think, I think, gentlemen, with that, we are, you know, uh, uh, you know, to, to the end of this session. Um, personally, I enjoy this session a lot. Uh, what I understood, you know, uh, yes, 
experience is something which is not which cannot be just bought you know it's a journey uh, which each of the platform will eventually uh, uh, you know kind of ride on and and if personally uh, per probably there are three elements which i could conclude from the entire discussion one is of course content then there is technology and probably the third one is personalization so all these three taken together will eventually probably you know take us to uh, the next level of ott entertainment uh, with that i'd like to thank you all thank you audience and over to you kyati you are muted kyati <laughs> thank you so much fazal for steering this very interesting conversation and thank you gentlemen for sharing the insights with us uh, the hunger for content uh, in ott has been you know increasing day by day in the lockdown and uh, i think we are just hungry for more more good content more uh, seamless technology that can bring that content to us so thank you everybody for sharing your insights and stories with us and thank you for all of you for watching us till the end and if you are here still joined us with us then do not forget to engage in our online conversation using our hashtag e4m webinar with that we thank you all and i hope you have a very good evening stay safe and stay home everyone thank you Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you.